So my name is Robert Von Gaben, and I'm the founder and president of Green Toys. We're one of the leading environmentally friendly toys um, coming out of the United States. Um, there we go. It's Americans, what can I say? We don't know how to do it. So um, let me tell you a little bit about Green Toys, and then we're going to play a little game. So Green Toys products are made from 100% recycled milk jugs. These are literally the milk jugs that people drink out of in California. They're thrown in the recycle bin, and we're in the supply chain to be able to bring them and make toys out of them. Um, they're made, as I say, we sell in over 2,000 locations in the United States, and now we export to 90 countries internationally. Uh, thankfully, Israel being one of them. Uh, our biggest customers are Whole Foods, if you know the big uh, natural grocery chain in the United States, um, Amazon, um, Nordstrom's, Barnes & Noble. We're growing at 50% a year. And what I've been asked to talk about is little, literally the story of the company and how we grew and what our philosophy was, because we literally started in a garage in Silicon Valley. We never took investment. There was just two of us in a garage. And so I want to start with playing a little game. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about how we started, and we really try to incorporate the mind of the student. So how many people here are students? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Okay, keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Now, everybody who's not a student, turn around and look at a student. Like, look at a student. Maybe you look them in the eye, right? You see that look? Do you remember that? Enthusiastic, idealistic, a little dumb, right? You know? That's the way students are, right? And it's that mind, that naivete, that hey, you can do anything, was the thing that we've always tried to keep in the company. I want to introduce you to a guy. This is me in 1981. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that hair, right? Yeah. Do you know the term to see the, the world through rose-colored glasses? <laughs> I literally had rose-colored glasses, OK? So this is the kind of mind that we've tried to keep in the company. So when you're this idealistic person, and you're, you have this student mind, you have an idea. And you have an idea that you want to do a toy that's environmentally friendly. So what you do is you create a company called Green Toys. And the first thing you want to make is you want to make something quantifiably green. You don't want it to be green shit, green bullshit. You want it to be a real green company. Okay? We thought that the way to make things green is to make them local. So we really wanted to manufacture within the United States, so we didn't have all this transportation in our supply chain. And then, of course, we wanted all the products to be completely safe. So it, dealing with recycled material, you have, you're literally dealing with the things that people are throwing away. Um, uh, VTool today talked about the, th the product that is most prevalent in their country, which is rubber wood. In our country, we have garbage. <laughs> So we make the toys literally from garbage. So you have, you're this idealistic student mind, and you want to make this product. But then you've got all this other stuff you want to put on top of it to recycle. It kind of looks like the mind of a student, doesn't it? It's just jumbled and confused. But that's what we wanted to do. So the goals in the company, as I say, when we started, were threefold. We wanted to make something that's quantifiably great. We didn't want to just say eco-friendly on the box. We had to prove that it really was green, scientifically. Also, we wanted it to be locally made, which meant we had to use manufacturers where we live in California. Of course, as anyone in the toy industry knows, if you manufacture in China, it's easy. You make a phone call, they make you a million toys. <laughs> Not the case in the United States, specifically in California, which is one of the hardest places to manufacture in the world because of the environmental standards that our factories are under. And then finally, we needed safe materials and processes. We wanted to use recycled material, but we needed trusted vendors. So this is how we started out with the student mind, the naivete to say we can do this, two people in a garage in 2007. So what we decided to use is we use 100% recycled milk containers. We're fortunate in California that there's a huge supply chain of milk jugs. Milk jugs are made from plastic called High density polyethylene. It's number two plastic. It's one of the safest, cleanest plastics around. And it's separated in our trash tree. And it wasn't used for anything. It was used for piping or, or buckets and pails and things like that. But nobody had ever really used it for an injection molded toy. 
when we called our vendor the first time, they wouldn't send us a sample. They said, it's not going to work. And we said, well, you recycle plastic, right? Yeah. Send us your plastic. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. So we, of course, naive, naive. We just said, well, send it to us, and we'll try it. The second part is the wide availability. As I say, there are millions of pounds of milk jugs that are recycled every year in the United States. 50% of it, ironically, goes to China for manufacturing in China. There just isn't enough use for it in the United States. So we got no shortage of milk jugs. And then finally, it's good marketing. What happens for us is that when we say it's made from recycled milk containers, it closes the loop in the education. Because kids are smart nowadays. You can't say to them, recycle, and they say, why? And you say, well, just do it because I told you so. That's the way I was raised. But nowadays, you actually explain to your child, you do it because it creates products. What products does it create? Green toys. So you give them green toys. So our key to our safety and our strategy is absolute simplicity. There are some toy companies that have very large supply chains and very complicated products. I'm from New York. We're not that smart. So what we did was we said, we're going to limit the raw materials. We used one raw material. Recycled, number two, high density polyethylene. And then we put color into it, which is a very well known additive to plastic. We have limited suppliers. We know who all our suppliers are. We visit them on a regular basis. We know where the plastic's coming from. We literally can go and watch the milk jugs coming from the garbage companies and go in. And it's done in Los Angeles, ironically. And then we make simple products. I'll show you a couple products later. And if you've had a chance, please look at the products outside. Even though it says don't touch, please touch, feel. Because the products are incredibly simple. There's no batteries. There's no electronics. There's no glue. There's no metal. There's no screws. We have trucks with no metal axles. And we do that so that when you're done with it, you can throw it in the recycling bin. Um, the challenge with recycled plastic, and the reason why you don't see recycled plastic in a lot of products, is it's notoriously hard to work with. We have to do specialized tooling. It doesn't cool like regular plastic. It doesn't warp like regular plastic. God forbid I would try to make one of these things out of recycled plastic. It would be a nightmare. And um, there's, there isn't any material certification. It isn't like you call up BASF or GE Plastics and you say, I want plastic, and they give you a nice little certificate. It's all small, uh, small suppliers, and they're small recyclers. And defined, designed for manufacturer, as I mentioned is a huge challenge. One of the things that I'm sure you're learning from your professors, and you'll learn that sustainable design is much more challenging than designing for virgin material. It's a real struggle. So one of the things we do, and we're very proud of this, and the way we can ensure safety is we test every lot of raw material. Literally, when we order raw material, 100,000 pounds at a time, it sits in a truck. On the, on the parking lot, and we take one pound of it, and we send it to the safety lab. And this is something that not very many companies do, literally. So we're testing for all the chemical testing in the US, every state in the US, EU, there's an ISO certification. And then we're doing food contact. We do this for our trucks. When you have a truck, it's met a food contact standard. And we also do BPA testing and a lot of these chemical testing, which is not required in toys. But we do it for all our toys. Because it's one of the challenges of working with recycled material, you're getting a different lot every time. And luckily, we've never had a failing test in all the time we've done that. Packaging. Packaging is one, of the, is one of the hardest things we do to be a truly green company. As a matter of fact, packaging many times is harder than the product itself. Because what we do is we make it from 100% recycled cardboard. There's no twist ties. There's no cellophane. There's no fasteners at all. Parents love them because they can rip open the package easy and the kids can get to the product. And then when you're done, you throw in the recycle pit. And early on, one of the things that we did is you notice the boxes. They're one color boxes. So, you know, because you go to the toy store and the toy store is a sea of color and a sea of foil. And when everyone's yelling, sometimes the way you get attention is to whisper. So we all our boxes are printed in one color. And it stands out on the shelf. Um, simple and eco product design. You'll notice our products, like I said, they have no screws, they have no glue, they have no paints. So when, when we get the certification letters from all the big retailers, they say, tell us about the surface coatings, we say there are no surface coatings on our product. 
And when they say, what about metals and screws? There is no metals book. It all has to just fit together. Made out of recycled plastic, made in the United States, made at a price that people can afford. This rocket sells for about $24.99 with a couple little characters. Um, when we started the company, one of the things that was a priority for me is I didn't want to go to China. It's a, if you've ever been to China, it's a long flight, it's a hard life, I'm lazy, I just wanted to say, let's just do it in our backyard. So what we did is we created a supply chain in San Francisco. So where our company location is, over the Golden Gate Bridge, our manufacturing, our warehouse, where our packages are printing, our assembly, is all within a small footprint. Most toy companies, from the point of manufacture to their warehouse in the United States, is over 10,000 miles. Ours is 10 miles. Because we've tried to pull all the transportation out of the supply chain. Now, as we get bigger, my dream is to take this model, pick it up, and drop it someplace else. Take the local, maybe in Israel, maybe in Europe, maybe in Asia. People say, would you ever manufacture in China? And I would say, yes, to sell into China. right? So it's reverse globalization. My dream would be able to do this in five or six places around the world. So here we are today. Five years later, we're growing at 50% a year. We've been incredibly lucky people. By keeping that student mind, keeping that naivete of just anything is possible, and not compromising at all. We're very, very proud of this. I mean, this is something that I'm super proud of every time I wake up in the morning. Because here we are, we've grown 50% a year, and we've created a real green product, we make it in the United States, and we use safe materials and processes. So what I want to do and leave you with is, as, mu as much as I hate to admit it, I think everybody needs a little more of this guy in your life. <laughs> because it's the naive student mind that I think that we all have to remember to keep to our pro into our products and into our companies to do what's best for parents and for children. Thank you very much.